Welcome, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. Today we're holding uh, our monthly tech meet at Ronnie's Garage. We're going to be talking about Rolls-Royce convertible top woes. This is an 80, I think 86 Corniche. That, as you can see, it has some issues. <laughs> um, what I like to talk about is this guy caused his own problems. This is an early Corniche. Uh, that one right there is not a Corniche, but it's a 67 Silver Shadow drop head coupe. Same basic system. One switch, you disconnect latches, which latch to this, right? You disconnect those manually with your hands, right? And then you, with your hands, you push the button and the top goes back and goes down. Awesome, right? And you push it up, it goes back up. It, it worked. The only ever, the only problems he's ever had was fluid would just kind of like evaporate, so you'd have to add fluid. Sometimes the pumps leak. It's the only problem. Sometimes these latches would break because people didn't have it in the right place. Uh, the Corniche 4 came out with something that was supposed to be more modern, right? One touch. So. All you have to do is make, you always have to make sure the parking brake's on, on the later cars. You just push a button, and it had these motors in here, or I think they're in the top, that unscrew it to latch it, right? And then once that's done, then it tells it to fold down the back window, and then put this away, roll the windows down, all that kind of stuff. So what that means is you've got to have a lot of hydraulic lines. You've got to have a lot of limit switches, position switches, you need a computer to run it all, and that is the biggest problem with the Corniche 4 and Corniche S, and <laughs> Azure, right, and, and uh, what was the Bentley version of that, the uh, Bentley Azure, and then a, the later Corniche, uh, Bentley Continental GTs, all this because people wanted a one touch. It's too much work to disconnect this latch. I might break a nail. <laughs> That's just my opinion. So, like I said, these never have problems unless <clears throat> the top is down. There's a tonneau that goes over this that attaches to this. As you can see, this is a little bit messed up right now too, right? And it attaches to the little pins on the inside here. So if you try to put the top up when it's down and that is attached, you will break it. And typically you won't know. You start to go, you, you got this big smile on your face, I'm gonna put my top up, and all of a sudden you hear this pow! And you look back and the thing is all cockeyed. Uh, this system has, as you can see, a lot of levers and stuff. This is a job I did not wanna do but the guy wanted it fixed anyway, so. Um, so he broke a pivot. And then, kept going and broke another pivot. So what I'm gonna do over here is, to, and then once you break two pivots, things start to bend. Okay, and that, I have, this is not the first time I've seen this, I have in the past been able to, the pivot that usually breaks is this one right here. It connects to this, right? So you have a bolt that goes through there. This connects to the, the hydraulic ram. Well, the ram does this. This does the levering for all of these uh, articulated joints. So usually it breaks a pivot, and I have replaced the pivots. No big deal. Does it make noise when it breaks? Or oh, it makes a noise, yeah. And then you just kind of need those depends at that point, right? <laughs> um, this right here should be straight. See how this does this dog leg? It's supposed to be straight. If you look at the other side, which is still attached, I tried to take as little apart as possible to get this thing out. But I have to take this out. I'm going to have to just remove all this other stuff, take a torch, heat this, because once it's bent and you try to bend it back, it's going to bend in a different spot. And then you'll get a dog leg in it. That's how iron and steel works. Uh, even aluminum doesn't like to be bent back, right? Uh, so I've got to fix this. So I, what I had to do, oh, this is the fun part, is, let me, can you grab the other side of this? Let's, 
we'll just lay this down and I'll show you the multiple layers of stapled and nailed and glued stuff that had to come off. Okay, so this right here is glued over the header, which you have to remove the seal and all that kind of stuff and get to it. And then it has cables that attach to this, they attach in this little hole here. They're called Bowden cables and they're supposed to keep every, this, this top material tight when it's up. And uh, so once I got this unglued and peeled back, then there's the padding here. And I, I can't put this up because it's missing a piece. So I apologize for that. So this padding, which is not only glued and hand stitched, is stapled all over the place. All right, so you have to take a little tool, break every staple because they don't want to come out, and then take pliers and pull the, the legs off, right? And then, of course, they're stapled underneath where it's sewed up, and then there's padding in here, and there's, there's screws under that padding that attach it to these. So this is kind of a, really a pain in the butt. Is it prudent just to replace that piece when you've got it all apart? It's prudent, yeah. What does a part like that cost? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't even like throwing numbers out there anymore. Okay. Because they've changed so much since the last time I priced them. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. Let's go ahead and lay this back again. When you get a convertible top replaced, typically they just do the skin. If your padding is, is bad, and you can tell that because when the top's up, you get the little, uh, like, worn old nag backs, right, then your padding is weak, so it needs to be replaced. But the first thing that goes on this is the headliner. So imagine this top all up, right, then you put the, the headliner in. It's glued and attached in so many places. Uh, so that's, stapled. if you're going to do your top, huh? Stapled here. Stapled and glued. They don't just staple it. Usually they glue it too. <clears throat> And then they glue like it to that. There's wood bows, yeah. yeah. There's pieces of wood in between all these. Okay? Even the header has a piece of wood right here that's you know, cut to fit. Um, and, and back here, there's even back here behind this top, you see all the staples in here? Which is you need. There's a piece of wood that's screwed and glued to the back side of the metal there. And it's, it's called a bow, and, the, and they're not cheap, and they're kind of hard to get to and put in, and then they've got to be finished so that it's nice and smooth, because they come rough. Hey, Ronnie, but do, they, do you have to take the whole top off just to replace that back bow? If your top has got to the point to where it's pulling, and it's, you've got to replace it anyways, because there's no place to staple through. It rips the top, so you've got to do the top. And as I said, this is the first thing to go in. So if your headliner is perfect, then you don't have to do it. But if it isn't, you've got to do it before you put the top on, so you might as well do it all at once. And you can spend six to eight grand at least to do a top on one of these. What uh, about that, 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 that motor? You know the hydraulic motor that goes up and down. Don't that leak? Wouldn't it leak? Sometimes they do. Typically, it's very little. It's pretty rare that I've even done one of those. I've topped them off a little bit. You top them up when the top is down, because that's when the fluid's the highest in the pump. Uh, and I've never seen a ram leak. On the later cars, the fours and on, they have hoses that leak, and I think there's 10 or 12 of them. And they just deteriorate. And they, that's a big deal. It's a big deal to do those. I think I quoted 20 plus grand to do a Cornish four poses and get the top because it had problems. Steve asked if I'm going to send this out to a poster guy once I. We're going to save this top. I'm going to glue it and staple it all back together. Hmm? Well, that, that's, those are what are held down by these plates. This is padding. This is between the headliner and the oh. skin. You won't see that. Uh, I will be able, I'll be able to save this because I really haven't done much except for unglue a lot of stuff on the outer skin. Surprise. So pressure relief on the hydraulic system that would maybe limit the amount of force? Well, you could do that, but these are hard to lift. 
So they need a lot of pressure. Um, and one problem that happens on these that you can usually overcome by just changing the fluid is they'll be real slow, and sometimes they need a little help. And, uh, that might be either a pump that's leaking inside uh, or doesn't have enough fluid in it or the fluid's deteriorated or low. Um, but they really very rarely have problems unless you try to put it up. So, Ronnie, I can't understand. Now, you put the boot on, the boot locks down. You, you stay, mm -hmm. How can you not know the boot is on? <laughs> I mean, We're talking a, about people here. That's, a, that, that's some E1 stuff in the Navy. That's I mean, just one topic. We could, we could be here all day long, right? <laughs>